Good afternoon, everyone. And here she is in the daylight, the 1989 Kawasaki Intruder. 89, what am I talking about? 79. This thing is very much a classic. See, so yeah, I just gave her a quick shine up today, but very complete. Nice little unit. The only big thing with it is the carbs are completely fouled. I believe they use uh, Makunis with a 32 millimeter opening, if I remember right. So anyway, we'll get them cleaned up. Parts are available. Even new carbs are relatively cheap. So hey, there you go. So a brief history on Kawasaki snowmobiles. So Kawasaki got into the snowmobile business in the mid 70s. They saw that there's some profitability to be made and uh, Snowjet, which had been a huge manufacturer, had gone belly up and they had a very substantial dealer network and they were looking for a new product. So Kawasaki came in and they introduced, uh, I believe Articat was building some of the earlier, like it was a Snowjet design and then Articat was building it with a Kawasaki motor in it. And finally the lineup matured to the Drifter series, which was below this one. And then the Intruder was its own model, only offered in a 440 fan. And then the Invaders, which were um, 340 or 440s. And I believe, well, the 440s were the liquid. And I don't know if the 340 was liquid or not. I'm sure someone can let me know in the comments. So 76 Cowies building snowmobiles. By 19, I don't think they quite made it to 1983. Uh, Kawasaki Japan came in and saw what the debt ratio was with the marketing and the design of these sleds and uh, basically pulled the plug, which was a shame because in the day, these were rocket ships. The 440 liquid in the Interceptor was one of the quickest off the line sleds of that day, if I remember right. And even this um, intruder with the 440 fan was a very quick little sled, good size, like a like what you'd say is a modern suspension setup in the rear end. Again, the front end is a little basic, but as you can see, like you had a nice comprehensive instrument gauge, as in, yep, there's your tack and uh, speedo, but you had your fuel and then oil injection, which was huge, so. The intruder here was the lowest sled you could get oil injection with, and then the um, invaders, of course, all had uh, oil injection with the um, 440 liquids, or the 340s, which I can't, again, I can't remember if it's liquid or not. But this was huge for the time. I believe it was only the second manufacturer to offer oil injection, and it was a big deal. Now on this one, of course, it's been pulled off, which is probably a good thing considering it's 42 years old and you have to do uh, pre-mix in her, but it did come equipped with oil injection back in the day. It was a shame that these didn't carry on longer. It would have been nice to have seen a good rivalry between these guys and Yamaha. Their sleds were very innovative, really well made, even a touch overbuilt, some would say. And for 42 years old, this thing has aged pretty gracefully in the design phase, in the, from a looks and design standpoint. Parts are still fairly available for them, depending. There's some specialty stuff that's gonna to be tough to find. I think tracks are a bit of a bugger nowadays. Thankfully, this one's in very good shape. But uh, really neat piece of history. So there is Kawasaki snowmobiles for you. They're only around a few years, but they made a heck of an impact on the industry. And looking forward to getting this one cleaned up and going. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope everyone's staying healthy. See you on the next one.